Oh, they're on shady thicket. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome to another Virtual Vines. I'm Dan Mackey from The Loaded Grape, and we have T.C. Frazier from Tryon Distributing. And uh, as of every week, we have an amazing lineup of wines for you. Uh, really, really excited about this. Uh, we haven't had a chance to do this in a while, which is delve in to a Pacific specific region well, well, it borders the pacific too. The pacific it's right there but uh region uh and that is hitting south america and uh especially especially uh chilean and argentinian wine argentinian wines i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, I, you know uh, the problem is i haven't started drinking yet so yeah. my tongue my tongue is all well, tied when you think of south I america it up. i mean there are lots of countries in south america that do lots of uh indigenous spirits drinks uh, pisco sours and whatnot mm, yep. uh but really chile and argentina are the lion share i know uruguay uh, it's coming on with some Tanat out of Montevideo. But really, if you think any points north of there, uh, it's a little, a little bit too hot. You know, I know Brazil. I've heard of Brazil making some wines. I haven't really tried many of them. But yep. from what I heard, uh, you know, nowhere near the the level of uh, world-classness, I guess I should say, of Argentina and uh, and Chile. But what's, what's great tonight is we're going to kind of delve, as Danny said, into it. But hopefully within six wines kind of, uh, you know, showcase the differences. Because often when people say South America, they just jump. Chile and Argentina together. It's almost like saying Austria and Germany. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, they share, they share a common language just like these guys do, and they share a border. But outside of that, there's not really many other kind of commonalities that they have. So we'll no. try to discuss that a little bit. As no, we get we'll get that, into so. that. Uh, I do want to kind of talk about a couple of little housekeeping things first. Uh, as always, uh, I'll bring this up. Uh, you know, we have a loyalty program going on right now. Uh, and with that loyalty program, uh, the new sweatshirts are in. Uh, sporty. It's getting sporty. So six, uh, 40, 45 points, basically a purchase of 45 bottles, get you a free uh, 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 sweatshirt. Uh, and these should be in soon. I, I We have the, the knit hats, winter hats, the... the uh, uh, I guess if a toboggan, if you're here from the south, um, uh, they should be in soon. And I have four different colors, but in the two different styles. Or the inner hipster in you, right? Or the inner hipster in you. <laughs> uh, and then I want to bring up uh, most importantly here uh, the big the big thing to talk about. Yeah. Uh, we have it scheduled. That's our Valentine's uh, beer and wine, wine and beer dinner, however you want to put it. Um, it is five small plates, each paired with a beer and a wine. Um, so it's uh, $60 for non-members, $55 for members. Uh, it will take place at the Porterhouse uh, Burger Company on Market Street on Wednesday, February 10th at 6.30. Um, they're not normally open that day, so they're opening up, so we can do the special dinner in there. Uh, my uh, Full disclosure, my brother-in-law is the is the chef, uh, so uh, the food is amazing. If you haven't done one of our dinners, uh, please consider doing, one, doing this, and you can actually uh, make a reservation now on our website so you can go and do that uh so yeah feel free to it's like true pop-up it's like uh like a separate wine thing through a wine shop but at a restaurant doing food that the restaurant doesn't normally do right. so it's right kind of, yeah right uh and so <laughs> Valentine's dinner. Yeah, it'll be our Valentine's dinner. Treat, me <laughs> treat I'm gonna treat her to that bag. Guys, bring some bubbles. You know, if you, yeah. if you see if you see Vanna, she'll be working. So you know, it'll be her little dinner. You know, I'll be a little cold. Well, you know, we're definitely gonna be putting her to work. You I know, do like, yeah. I do like Valentine chocolates. Okay, well, that Valentine's Valentine's chocolates. Valentine's chocolates. There you go. Well, so I just want to let you know it is available on our website. You can go and sign up now. Uh, it'll be limited to 50 spots, so uh, and it should go pretty quick considering we had to break up. And do two dinners based on avail. You know, everybody's gonna be social distance, their own tables, that stuff like that. Um, and so, and um, yeah, so we'll we'll be getting that all uh, taken care of here. I mean, you think, uh, for, will, 50, I mean, you think for fifty five bucks? I mean, you know, that still leaves you plenty of money for Uber. I don't know where you guys live yeah. at, but yeah. you know, with this right here, I don't know. Uh, even even if you are, uh, you know, don't ask for seconds for everything and you're good to go, uh, even with the food and a little bit of the wine, I mean, you're still just pleasantly full and you may want yeah. to get somebody to just to drive yeah. you home and it, just be it, like, hey, man, I didn't want to drive. So, it is uh, pleasantly you, full after. People, people, was, I, yeah. I haven't heard one complaint about either the either get, not getting full or, or the booze. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it is a great time. We just did. Because for, for, for every one food, we have two booze. That's what's so great about yeah, it. So. Yeah, but it's, it's true. Uh, so, so go ahead. Feel free to sign up for that tonight or uh when you're in the shop this week uh and i will tell you that as word gets out spaces will fill up so uh so do know that and now it's time to let's 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 not hesitate any longer let's dive into why everybody's here and that is to uh talk about uh these south american wines and this is a wine that we've already had on the show however we sold out of this so quickly yeah. so fast 
uh, and people kept on asking, hey, do you got any more of this? You got any more of this? No, no, no. Well, good news. The new vintage is in from this Casa Silva uh, Sauvignon Gris. And you're going to go Sauvignon Gris, and that's why we have TC here to tell you all about this, this amazing varietal and this amazing winery, which um, I tell you right now, we, we've had a couple of things in the shop, and we're gonna actually do two wines. This one and another one tonight from yeah. this from this winery. Two single so. vineyard from from uh, from wineries that really <clears throat> personify Chile. And if you think about the area, I mean, you know, we're gonna be talking about the Aconcagua Valley uh, tonight, and uh, you know, we could talk about Casablanca, one of my favorite areas, just to say, yeah. uh, you know, the uh, the Elki Valley, which the Mayu is from, which is north northern Chile. Yeah, uh, okay. But we're gonna start off uh, with Casa Silva. Yeah, there you go, a little map oh, of Chile there. Chile, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think I think it averages about 170 miles wide at any given point, and I think almost almost 300 miles wide and about uh, you know 2,700 miles long, uh, flanked right there with the Andes to the right uh, and then to the Pacific Ocean. And 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 if I can, and before I guess I talk maybe specifically about this wine, just to talk maybe give you the cliff notes. Really, the the I'm about to take a test, and I didn't study for my my South American test. You know, what I always say about uh, South America versus Argentina is if I can really say it, you know, first off, one's more old world and one's more new world. And what, I, what do I mean by that? Well, in Chile, they were never devastated with phylloxera. And to my knowledge, it was the only winemaking region uh, today, to date, that we know of that was never uh, touched by phylloxera. So when I say old world, uh, not only a touch to certainly old world uh, styles of wine and winemaking, but the varietals. So Sauvignon Gris, uh, Carmenere, which we're going to talk about mm -hmm. here in a minute, uh, Pais, which we did on the last show. I mean, these are varietals that were literally brought over by the you know conquistadors and, and explorers from all throughout Europe through the ages. And when phylloxera happened, hold on. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that's sorry. Fine. I'm trying. Give me one second, TC, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the the map up so everybody yeah. can see the map. Oh, perfect. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna. Up. Back so. There we go. So now we got the, the big map up on the screen. Now, now no is muted. So yeah, yeah. So sorry, sorry about that, guys. So yeah, as you can see, Chile, a very long country, uh, only about you know 170 miles on average wide. I think uh, 270 at its longest. But it's all uh, situated in that kind of north central part. You know, you see Santiago right right there, which is the capital. And we're going to talk about a wine uh, a little bit later tonight. That's just north. But for all intents and purposes, we're going to start off. Uh, with the Conchagua Valley. And for those of you that can see the map there, Conchagua is very close. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's kind of small print for me to see right there, but mm -hmm. Conchagua is very close to Santiago. And, you know, the one thing I can say about Conchagua Valley, mm -hmm. not to get sidetracked, so I know I was really talking, talking about Argentina and Chile, but Conchagua Valley really personifies, uh, you know, Chile. And, you know, if any Chilean would say go to one wine region out of any of the wine regions that we mentioned earlier, uh, it would be Cachagua Valley. Not only is it is it fairly close to Santiago, but some of the oldest vines uh, planted in Argentina are there. And Casa Silva is one of those wineries that really personify that. They're fifth generation planted in the uh, late 1800s. And what they are, what's really cool is they're actually, since 2000, they're the most awarded Chilean winery in the 21st century. They're one of the most awarded, not only in South America, but in the world. So literally everything that they put out gets 90 plus points. I know we've talked about, you know, we care less about scores, but hey, let's face it, when you get 90 plus points for all your wines every time, that's kind of saying something. Yeah. When you're bringing up the map, Vanna over here was just talking about how it's freaking so delicious, <laughs> how delicious yeah. this wine is. I was is. expecting all the flavor to go yeah. with this white wine. Like, yeah. I was not expecting it's totally, totally unexpected. So there are only 300 cases imported of this wine. So that's why when last time you guys literally bought the last five cases, mm -hmm. I think we're sitting on four cases when we started the show. So I think tonight we're going to get probably close to that again. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, guys, as we dive into both of these regions, what I wanted to kind of give you the cliff notes on is, is, is Argentina, they export two thirds of what they make, uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, Chile exports two thirds of what they make, which is what we're talking about right now. And uh, Argentina consumes two, two thirds of what they make. So the wine, uh, industry even domestically is very big in argentina so let's just say the loaded grapes of the world started bu stopped buying malbec malbec out of argentina would find a way find a market or they would just drink it 
Yep. In Chile, if we stop drinking Carmenere and 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 Pinot Noir, which we'll try in a second, it would really be devastated because you know their whole industry is built on that, and not a lot of people, unfortunately, in Chile drink Chilean wine. Uh, it's one of these things that's kind of like this hidden gem that uh, that the winemakers know about, and they're putting out there internationally. Uh, but they, but you know, again, uh, it's you know, locally people are drinking French wines or Spanish wines or things of their of their heritage or Italian wines. But anyway, if I can kind of compare the two. As I said, you know, export more in Chile, consume more in Argentina. Argentina is the fifth largest uh, wine producer in the entire world, just right behind the United States. Chile is a little bit lower. Uh, and in Argentina, you know, again, it's a little hard to get labor because often, you know, work is so cheap, you know, they pay by the uh, the bucket so, or, or the basket. So once a lot of laborers get enough baskets picked, they're like, I'm done. I mean, they're like, that's that's all that's all the money I need to make today. You know, so, no. so, was, so yeah, I mean, and so there's not as much of that. So in Chile, it's a kind of a totally different uh, industry when and that goes, uh, you know, I'm not saying they're. Oh, God, I read an article one time saying they're harder workers. I'm mean, not going to start fights there, but I, you know, I, I don't know enough to say that. <laughs> but this is definitely uh, a region where they really showed Argentina how to do wine and sell wine internationally. So, talking about uh, Chile, uh, starting off tonight, you know what I love about Chile. We're starting off with Chile, and what, and if we were ever do a wine dinner. I actually love to do the softer, finesseful, more old world style wines from Chile. And I'm talking about the Pinot Noirs, uh, the Sauvignon Blancs, the Chardonnays, and in this case, a little Sauvignon Gris. And, and as I said, you know, this is an area that uh, was untouched by phylloxera. This is a little single vineyard, an Angostura from um, uh, Casa Silva, planted in 1912, guys. So this is literally a vineyard over 100 plus years old. Uh, it yields less than two tons an acre, and they import only around 300 cases. So that's why if you came in the loaded grape the past three, four months and said, hey, guys, Christmas is coming up, and Danny and Annie was like, hey, guys, I'm sorry. We'll, you know, we'll try to bring it back. Well, I called Danny, and again, we try not to repeat our want ourselves unless we either get A, a good deal, or B, we sell out, and we say, well, we just got to bring that back. back. And it's yeah, been about is, almost you know, nine, this ten is, months Yeah, this now. was one of the first virtual <clears throat> vines that we uh, did of um, – Kind of an um, accident thing. Like, we're just thinking, yeah. hey, it's a, we did it maybe in a tasting, and it just mm – -hmm. we had a, maybe yeah. a bottle or two. I don't know yeah. why we picked I don't it. Even but know I don't mean, know why we picked it. Was just, yeah. yeah, I think we were just trying to do something, something different. different. Yeah, I think something we were trying cool. to bring something to the market that was a little different. Got a great little price on this, uh, 18 um, and plus your discounts. Uh, so go to the loadofgrape.com and if you're in any of our wine clubs, go ahead and in that coupon code, use uh, a seller for seller, a state for state, or a uh, reserve for both the reserve club and grand reserve club. Yeah. So, uh, this is really excellent. So, 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 for those of you out there, you know, uh, and Danny and I, we said Sauvignon Green, you're like, wait a minute, Sauvignon Blanc, what's, what's the difference, right? First of all, let's all three say this is nothing like Sauvignon Blanc. Not this is all. not the grapefruit punch you in the face. Yeah. Great acidity, but not too acidic. Sometimes, like some, uh, maybe even like New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs can be, but very, very refreshing. You know, very refreshing. Sauvignon Gris is a native grape to uh, Bordeaux, uh, like Sauvignon Vert. Uh, it's actually an offshoot of Sauvignon Blanc, and it's actually kind of orange uh, to purple, uh, almost more reddish purple. I've seen some orange pictures, but if you were traveling uh, Casa Silva and Angostura, the uh, the 1912 vineyard, uh, as it were, uh, you'd actually, you'd, you'd think they're like Pinot Noir or Carmenere or maybe Malbec or something like that, but it's actually Sauvignon Gris, uh, which again, outside of Bordeaux, France, I, I cannot think of anywhere no. else outside of there uh, than Chile that grows it. And again, it's because of uh, the viniculturalists, the analogists, the settlers, the explorers, et cetera, et cetera, that brought vines from the old world. And the cost of their sort of, you know, well-drained soils that they have and where they planted, uh, it just was never touched by that root disease. And again, guys, this is a fantastic wine. Mm -hmm. Sees no oak whatsoever. Uh, it, it's fermented and aged in stainless steel barrels to maintain that fresh acidity, not too acidic. It's mm -hmm. it's got a nice acidity without being acidic, right? Yeah, it's not. I wouldn't say it's acidic maybe as a you know, like a pig uh, pool or something like pool that. Or, or yeah. even even, or even a, some Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon there. Blancs, yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Uh, but it has like a nice, beautiful stone fruit. Melon, to the, like a little yeah, black melon, honeydew. In honeydew there, yeah. uh, flavors on it. Um I would, I would, it, 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 it drinks with the same mouth feel as, uh, as a Sauvignon mm -hmm. Blanc. Um, and, but really, really refreshing and fun for this time of year. And even for the springtime, I think what, with food, I, I, this right now I'm thinking, uh, right. I, if I had a little shrimp cocktail, I'd be happy. Right. Yeah. I just wanting that. Uh, well, and you know, know, and you and I've talked about not the you know, cat out of the bag here, but we talked about maybe in the next couple of weeks doing some whites uh, yeah. for winter, maybe even, even closer than we think. But, but, you know, you know, guys, I get it. It's wintertime. It's cold outside. People are always think of reds. But 
you know, when the AFC championship is about to come on and you got your, you know, whomever over, you got, you know, your charcuterie board. Well, guys, you don't have to go straight to Malbec. You don't have to go straight yeah. to Cabernet. You need something fresh, something zippy, you know, nice. Mm -hmm. and when I mentioned Sancerre earlier, this is a great. So for you, like old world white wine drinkers mm -hmm. out there would absolutely love this wine. So again, uh, Casa Silva just really personifies uh, Italy and in, in, in Conchagua Valley, which in itself, I would say pound for pound is the area that I would say, you know, in terms of not only Carmenere, but uh, Pinot Noir and uh, Sauvignon Blanc and some of their cooler areas just thrive, just really, really do thrive. So again, guys, uh, what would you say? $18, 18 a bottle. $18. Um, you know, uh, uh, minus the discount. Minus so discounts I think if you're was... in the club. So, and if you're not in the club, you should be joining the club because uh, this the when we showcase wines like this, you want to get a little extra bonus discount on that. But uh, this is just a really, really fun wine. We're gonna we're gonna stay with some whites, but this time we're gonna go from Argentina over to Chile. So we're gonna cross the border um, with a blue, beautiful, beautiful Torrantes. Um, now this is uh, for those of you watching the show that might be in the hey, I'm looking for more organic and sustainably grown wines right now. This is it right here. And we actually have had this in the wine shop. Actually, new label on this now. Mm, I love it. Uh, Excellent. Which Excellent. used to have the, a picture of like the winery on it. And now um, this is beautiful um, turquoise color label that kind of pops off the shelf. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, pour me a little like bit. Um, and and because uh, I want to say maybe two years ago we we did this whole lineup. Um, as a um, you know healthy organic um, uh, natural uh, tasting that we did in the shop, um, and so I, when when TC suggested this as a as a white wine from Chile, I was like you know yes because it's it's really 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 good. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you get a lot of Trantes uh, from Spain, uh, but you know you yeah, in Galicia that's where they're doing it now. Uh, Trantes really just permeates in, in Argentina. I mean, when I think of Argentina, that's another thing to differentiate too. I think Argentina and Chile. When I think of Chile. Certainly, Chile has areas that make big, bold reds, but mm -hmm. they also have areas that make these beautiful, nice, light white and uh, light red wines, right? You know, Merlot, mm -hmm. uh, uh, even uh, Pinot Noir, especially, which we're going to try here in a second. But when I think of Argentina, I think of these big, more powerful, more beefy wines. Certainly, I've seen, you know, Pinot Noir from Patagonia in Argentina. Uh, and again, we're about to try a white wine, but but really, you know, white wine um, is is kind of an afterthought. It seems like in Argentina, you really yeah. have to seek it out, seek it out. And I would say about ten years ago, uh, when I was really getting into the wine game, Torrantes was this kind of unique thing. The wine uh, shops and the and the wine bars would start to buy because not only was it was it a great price point because you could sell it to folks on a retail level uh you, you can see the price right there yeah and also do it by the glass for you know seven eight dollars a glass and everyone's happy uh and just run with it because it's this beautiful floral wine well like anything else you know argentina the wine industry is, is so much bigger than in chile these kind of bigger producers started making this very almost like fruity pebble type like torrantes right mm -hmm. so when i think of uh michelle torino which is where we're having it now the el Esteco, the mm -hmm. torrantes or excuse yep. me the uh, tonight yep. that you guys had in wine club uh, i think it's one of andy's favorites i know he every time i see andy it seems like he talks about it's like you got any more of that tonight <laughs> left yeah they uh, from el Esteco. uh but this is their kuma which is uh a native dialect for, for meaning clean and pure, which is a, uh, a, a, a local tribe north uh, in the northern part of Argentina, actually predating the Incas uh, there. Uh, yeah, and this is actually from Salta. So for those of you seeing the map, uh, we're, we're certainly going to do Mendoza uh, tonight. But if you go up a little bit further, uh, almost to the very top, uh, that I think it's actually one of the biggest circles. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Danny. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Salta, and that's where we're at, guys. And these vineyards start at around 5,500 feet in elevation, and they go all the way up to almost 7,000. I think it was around 6,600 feet. So when we talk about organic, guys, I mean, this is like dry, uh, super hot days, super cold nights. Um, they have, last time I read it, I think it was 330 days of sunshine. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's mm -hmm. just, that's, that's like, it's crazy, but only eight inches of rain. So that's, it's dry and sunny as you can imagine. And so b having said that the critters, the bugs, the mold, the mildew, uh, you don't have to spray for it. You don't have to do all these extra things to, to try to do that. So this wine, uh, when you talk about organic, I mean, this is just about, uh, there you go. Second cam, camera one, <laughs> camera two. Sorry. Uh, that's totally fine. But uh, but this is a but guys, you know, when I think of I, I've had Mendoza Torrantes, and I'm not saying they're they're not good, but some of my personal favorite Torrantes comes from these northern parts 
up in Salta. Uh, and again, that's why we picked this one tonight, not only because it's organic, and we have a few other uh, certified biodynamic mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. organic wines tonight. But, but guys, this is just has this jasmine note, this like white pepper note, this like mm -hmm. orange, orange skin, not just orange, but like this kind of pith of an orange, orange skin, if I'm if I can say that. Uh, kind of like when the bartender twists an orange for your Manhattan or old fashioned or whatever, right there. Um, what do you guys think about this? You know, I, I, I'm absolutely, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you right now. Uh, Both of these yeah. wines have gotten Danny just like this is as quiet as Danny's been. I've been, I've been just <laughs> throwing this back while TC was talking, and uh, the 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 nose, the nose on this, I I, I think they can turn into a Yankee candle. Oh my god! Just, well, just, I mean, you it just is, want to keep smelling it. Yeah, it's like a it, towel that comes yeah, out, or yeah. like a shirt, or. Not to get too weird on it, like a significant other, maybe, you know, either now or maybe in college that you remember that you smell their shirt. And you're like, oh, it's got their smell on it, you know, and just you're like, oh, God. It's you just know. got this perfumey. Yeah, yeah. perfume floral. is the best way. To, perfume and floral are the, are the best words. Nose to on it. It's just yeah. really, really good. And then it just drinks nice and crisp. Uh, with a too little, easy is what too it is. easy. That's really what it is. This is too the easy. Slash pit well, you know, I I was waiting for somebody I to mean, say everything. Is I was tonight, waiting for you to say, "Well, there's the oh, pit there pounder. I got, a, yes. I got a little pit pounder. A little warm, go, yeah, warm, warm, warm up, warm, warm up, up the hands. The fire, the hands by the fire, because uh, that's what this is. Um, it is." Um, Really, good, like, really, really good. It's a fun um, wine, guys. And I think, okay, so there, these are two wines from two areas that, you know, Chile and Argentina, you know, I would say most of you that drink enough wine have, have heard about, maybe have had a few wines from there. These are two two wines that, you know, normally aren't on your radar when you walk in loaded grape. You're not, you know, if it's white wine, let's face it, you're looking for Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc from areas, and that's fine. There's lots of great ones there. But this, these are two wines, uh, sub twenty bucks. I think this one's sub fifteen dollars, yeah, guys. That yeah, that is, is just un un freaking real. I mean, yeah. you know, just organic AF as they say, right? Yeah. And, and uh, new look, uh, you know, this label which I'm loving, and uh, and again from one of the producers that you guys in the shop have just showed so much interest in the El Esteco. So uh, yeah, look at that, thirteen dollars. Thirteen. That's just that's I'd, crazy. It's yeah. it's a great price, uh, for folks. So if you're looking for, hey, you know what, we've I don't really have many whites in the house right now. Uh, I'm looking for something easy drinking. Or maybe you say I'm stocked up on the traditional whites. Maybe I, I'm yeah, stocked yeah. full of Chardonnays. Yeah. Everyone gifted me a Chardonnay every Christmas. Everyone gifted me a Pinot Grigio. Yep. I want something kind of different that I can drink that I don't have to just drink the same thing. I like that, over. Both of these definitely fall into that yeah, category. Something, yeah, something something totally different. different. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, these are. I'm, I'm trying not well, to get drunk tonight. That's, uh, <laughs> well, and they, and they say, you know, the R months, right? I mean, I don't know if this is still an R month, but this is a great, you know, shell wines and all the yeah. oysters, but scallops, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, ceviche, uh, you know, when I think of, you know, a nice little Latin dish or something, you know, nice mm -hmm. little ceviche, mm -hmm. uh, but even like some empanadas. I mean, you could throw this in there uh, as a starter or farmer's market when we were you know able to go to such things. Uh, there was a lady there. Uh, and for those of you in comments, please comment if you can remember her name. She sold empanadas, like the sweet and savory mm -hmm. ones. And she had this guava and like a basically all I remember was like guava and something else. But it was like the most yeah. decadent tart, but also sweet. And I was thinking this, the smell yeah, at the very end, yeah. because it, but it had that breadiness too. So it wasn't just straight sweet, you know, mm. oh my God, I could just have that. Or just again, a little starter course, uh, seafood. I mean, guys, this is just a wine that, that goes with just about anything. It really, it really, I mean, I, just, I don't think it needs anything really. I, I can just drink this. Both uh, of these wines are aperitif wines. I mean, yeah. they really are. I mean, hey, when the. You know the oven's preheating. Uh, you know the uh, the game's about to come on. Mm -hmm. You know pregame. You got to watch thirty minutes of the people jabber on about whatever. I mean these are the wines you should drink. And and at this price, this is this could be the hey. It's Tuesday night. I don't, I don't need it to have you know. Like, I come home from work and like pop you know pop this open. Both and, have Danny's favorite uh, capture right there. So when it, you know if you if you forget one of these wherever you know at a holiday party yes, or whatever. Yes, yes, you know, definitely a Stelvin. <laughs> A Stelvin enclosure, which uh, everybody else refers to as a screw cap, but I like to say Stelvin. Yeah, there you go. And, and again, that's just one of the uh, savings they're able to pass on to you guys because cork certainly can be expensive versus the Stelvin. But it just maintains the freshness. They want you guys to drink this wine at its, at its maximum freshness. You know, don't age don't age the Torontos. Drink no. immediately. 
No, and now we're gonna we're gonna switch categories here. We're gonna jump back and forth over the Andes. Over know. the Andes, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but I, uh, but one last chance here. If you haven't gone over to the website, you can uh, order these wines right now over at loadedgrape.com. If you're in the wine clubs, uh, you could in the coupon code you can put uh, seller for seller club, uh, state for state club, or reserve for reserve and grand re uh, reserve to get your club discounts at checkout. Um, all these wines uh, will be available uh, uh, four o'clock on Wednesday when we open. So. Uh, you can come pick those up. And now it's time to hit a little Pinot Noir. Let me yes. just let me finish this. Up. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'm going to save this for a second yeah, go before I go into Pinot. I'll let you start talking <laughs> about this lovely Pinot Noir, which another great price uh, tonight on on wine um, that has 91 points from Suckling or yeah, wine I mean, enthusiast. This, this is kind of again, the, these guys. Yeah. Well, well, uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah, Suckling with 91 points. So. Eduardo Chadwick, which is the most. Latin and English name I've ever heard of. I'm just like that's almost like McLovin. You like you sound like <laughs> an, oh, yeah. an Irish R and B singer. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyway, and, 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 I, and I kid, and I kid, chat, and I kid, Mister Chadwick, just because. Uh, first of all, I mean, these guys make freaking delicious wines, but he was named Decanter Man of the Year 2018, and this winery was named Winer of the Year by uh, Robert Parker's Wine Advocate in 2017. So this winery, uh, in addition to getting a lot of acclaim and accolades, they have the distinction of being, and I don't want to misspeak here, but I, I always say they're the oldest family-owned winery from Chile, certainly the oldest from their respective region, um, and then the oldest still in the uh, family in which it planted. This was 1870, and to my knowledge, I don't know of any other family-owned winery. Uh, we just did Casa Silva. That was only 1892, so sorry, guys. We can't, yeah. Only 1892, they, you know, they, they were a little late to the game. Uh, but Arazaris, uh, mm -hmm. Don Maximino Arazaris, uh, which planted uh, uh, here in Aconcagua. So this is a little area. I love how Danny has the map here because it's a little area that juts right across from east to west, north of Santiago. And, I, and although I've never been there, I've certainly drank enough of their wines and sold enough of their wines. And, and as the rep uh, from the winery told me many moons ago, uh, said, you know, if you fly into Santiago, it's like any other metropolitan city. You know, it's kind of gray in certain times of year. It's sort of smoggy because there's millions of people. It's a concrete jungle, right? But as the Andes kind of cuts over, you have this green pastoral area that's almost like the Garden of Eden, like almost land had, hadn't touched. And so this particular winery owns literally thousands upon thousands of protected natural acres, uh, of which they have several hundred acres planted um, east to west from warmer areas, which they do some beautiful Cabernet Sauvignons and some Syrahs and some Carmeniers, all the way to some of their coastal uh, areas, which is where they originally planted, excuse me, uh, it, uh, very close uh, to the Pacific Ocean, which is where they grow Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and a little bit of Pinot Noir, is where, which is where we're having right now. So if I were to have, uh, you know, a bunch of sommeliers over, it would kind of be unfair to say, uh, you know, we're going to do a Pinot Noir lineup and uh, blind test them uh, on a Chilean Pinot Noir because, again, Chilean Pinot Noir is not a as well known as a California Pinot or as a Burgundian Pinot or as an Oregon Pinot. I mean, these are things that most sommeliers probably would probably have to know more. But this is a fun area, much like New Zealand, um, much like other areas, Patagonia, which I mentioned earlier, that are finding these international varietals that, that you're like, wait a minute, Pinot Noir, it's the heartbreak grape, right? Well, hey, Chile being long and skinny has these nice, cool climate, uh, almost more of a maritime Mediterranean, whereas you think of uh, Argentina, continental. Very cold winters, very hot summers, right? Uh, and much drier, whereas you think of, uh, of Chile, uh, a, a little bit wetter, a little bit more Pacific Ocean influences. Most vineyards are only like three to 600 feet in elevation. So again, when I, if I were to do a South American wine dinner, I would probably start with Chile and then finish the night with, with Argentina because Argentina just has that bigger grip. Not to say our, uh, Chile doesn't have wines of that, but I think of Chile, you know, Chile just has this beautiful sophistication. So when this Pinot Noir, guys, mm -hmm. it has these nice supple tannins, mm -hmm. you know, it almost has this like raspberry tea leaf kind of thing going mm -hmm. on to it. Yeah. Um, very, very herbaceous on the nose. Yeah. I was going to say it's mm -hmm. very like yeah. earthy. Or yeah. And, and so again, this, like... this wouldn't be a Pinot Noir that you may be quote unquote accustomed to. But again, this is a beautiful 100% Pinot Noir from the oldest family owned uh, winery from a very green, very pastoral area. Uh, that uh, that quite frankly, their Pinot Noir is only has only gotten better and better and better. Their Pinot Noir, when I started drinking it about eight years ago, was was solid, 
Uh, but now it's it's kind of turned a corner and almost become its own thing. It's got these supple tannins, almost like a little of this, and I don't want to throw people off here, but like a little of this like tobacco, like mm-hmm. you walk into yep. like a nice tobacco store, like a place that has mm-hmm. a nice scotch list. Yep. You know, you're like, you know, it has this like elegance to it, I guess, you yes. know. Uh, oh. old, old school, uh, you know, 1960s Rat Pack kind of thing. Yeah, no, it does. Stuff. It does. You know, and so and so that's what I love about this wine. It just, it's a little little herbal, little, little has a little pepper, a little smoky, almost like this forest yeah. kind of a thing going on. Yeah, but, I was going to say, even even in the the, the the taste has a little, little yeah, smoke to a little, it. A little, uh, smoky, a little smokiness. So this, uh, you know, by the campfire, you know, could could also be a, a little bit of a pit powder. Absolutely, pit so powder, guys. We'll put it up there. We'll warm the glasses up. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. No, it uh, it is, uh, you know, it's not your typical. If you're thinking Sonoma Monterey, yeah. uh, it's going to have a lot more of that maybe a jamminess to it. Nope, doesn't have that. I would say it's almost more um, uh, Oregon in style. Uh, yeah, uh, with with the with the earth and feel. Uh, yeah, it's got the earthiness, but 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 more beefy. It's almost yeah. like someone had turned in Oregon and and went. Uh, you know, you are a girly man. You must lift some weights. And yeah. this is like this more beefy. And, you know, and so that's what I love about this particular wine is whenever I would have restaurants uh, ask me, TC, we already have the California by the glass Pinot Noir. Where's an area? Or maybe we have the maybe the counterpart to Burgundy, uh, if you can find it that cheap um, uh, enough for a by the glass pour. This would be one I would pour because it had all those aforementioned stories that we were talking about, but it had this unctuousness if i can say that yeah. that people in greensboro and the triad let's face it you guys like that in your pinot noirs i know you know i, I love jevray chambertin as much as the next guy but um you know sometimes we only come out at night we don't we don't we don't divulge ourselves as much as the the bigger name mm-hmm. pinot noir houses out there we do but this is a beautiful pinot uh that can certainly go for any of your california drinkers i know i don't know it just has this it just has this extra it to it yeah. that uh danny and i are, i think i really kind of struggling to find that articulation but i but i think we're, we're leaning more towards new world certainly in style a little bit firmer tannin not as earthy as say like um i would say burgundy right not yeah. as acidic as burgundy but not as jammy or as sweet or as um fruity as so, as you said, Sonoma, Russian River, Carneros yeah, yeah. Uh, style Pinot Noir. So they yeah. want to know how, to, how you would compare this to Miami. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think Miami's Pinot Noir, is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't want to get sued here tonight, but yeah. So, but this, but this guy's. I mean, this is this is a hundred percent Pinot Noir, but this is beautiful with like a little duck or mm-hmm. like a little lamb skewers or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking just a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, I know we, you know, I know we've said uh, salmon and tuna, but honestly, I think take some salmon on like a wood plank. You know that like a yeah, nice yeah, uh, cedar, wood cedar wood plank. Wood plus, you know, if you're like me, you know, I can never get the grill just oiled enough to, to cook salmon where it doesn't fall apart. Mm-hmm. So get that that wood plank on there with this right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe some couscous, a little risotto. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. some maybe some uh, red onions or something like that. Yeah. Some What's peppers. The name of this one again? I'll see. Just yeah, it's 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 scrolling on the it's scrolling uh, a razzery, on the yeah, yep. a razzery. Uh, so Don Maximino, so they call this Max Reserva. Obviously, Reserva is just. Arbitrary. They do make an entry level, but this is sort of like a step up, essentially. So it spends a little bit more time at the winery uh, during, as the French would call, élevage, which just, they take it just an extra little élevage, little, little, little would take a little, little pulse push up. So, so I wanted to, I want to show 20, everybody, uh, but, but under twenty dollars for Pinot Noir. Can we just go ahead and say that? Uh, I, mean, yes, I think, I think we're bearing the lead here. Yeah, bearing the lead, <laughs> way under it, so 17, 17, so, yeah, so, yeah. so uh, yeah, close to fifteen dollars with some <laughs> yeah, people's yeah, discounts so. and everything. Uh, so I wanted to show because we talked about that Mediterranean and style of Chile. Um, and that's the winery right there. So you're seeing the palm trees. You're seeing the 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 the, the mountain. So it looks yeah. so 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 pretty. And yeah. So, well, well, and they and they uh, and again, I've had a few of uh, my colleagues go on supplier tours uh, here, and they've obviously I just you know sort of salivate uh, when they talk about it because again, a raspberry being that old uh, certainly can show you a good time, break out old vintages stuff that we obviously can't even get. And uh, and as you can see from from the just let me look at that. It's like mm-hmm. it's like someone yeah. goes goes yeah. and like dust every day there. It's like, uh, it's, like, it's, like no it's like a church. There. It's like a church yeah. or something. It does like look that. like a yeah. The, ba- the barrel room. The barrel room is quite impressive. Uh, that's why I wanted to put a picture of that. I was like, yeah, I'd yeah. never seen a barrel room so neat and pretty. Yeah. And then and then uh, if you kind of. 
let me let me take us off the screen so you might be able to see the other one uh, a little bit better. Uh, but down here is those um, uh, uh, what are those uh, bar barrique yep. style mm -hmm. uh, barrels yep. uh, that they use for the wine is kind of yep. down here. So I just I, this is a facility I can't, I can't wait to visit just because it looks well, so state of the art yeah. and so beautiful. Well, Arazari, at guys, the same time. Uh, again, you know, it can't be understated. When I I'll admit when I, you know when I first had a ride with. Uh, God, circa 2012, and he was from Chile. I thought it was just another South American supply. And then again, I, I treat everyone the same. I don't mean to sound like that. I mean, yeah. I, there's a lot of really good, drinkable, everyday uh, wines from Argentina and Chile. And, and at the end of the day, we'd get a few beers or whatever else, and we'd always become best of friends. But when this guy was talking about Erasmus in the story, which again, in just a few minutes, it's like, you know, what what Winston Churchill say, you know, I can expand for two hours if I need to, but ask me to speak for four minutes or ten minutes, like the hardest thing in the world <laughs> to do, you know. I mean, I can, I, you know, uh, so so this is a winery that again, I encourage you, like Danny did his homework on the pictures. I mean, just the, the a, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Yeah, as they say. Yeah. But this is really a winery that we're. I mean, I know we're not doing the Carmenere, the Sauvignon Blanc, the Chardonnay. All line price, Danny. So if I go ahead and say <laughs> yeah. you guys are just, yeah. hey, you know, I'm not a biggest Pinot Noir fan, but I'm loving what these guys are, <laughs> are doing. Uh, Danny, uh, just yeah. email, text yeah. these guys. I know, I know we're uh, spitballing here, but you know, anything Carmenere, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc uh, that these guys make, uh, if if you're big fans of, we can certainly get as well. So yeah, we we, we might be showcasing some of those in the future as well, just uh, down the road here in the in in, in 2021. Well, I even thought about you know the oldest family owned winery from a respective area. We're going to do one here in a minute from Argentina, our Razzari is the oldest from Chile. Mm -hmm. We have Lente and Gunlock Bunchu, which are basically mm -hmm. the oldest mm -hmm. from California. California. Yep. Uh, we have Yolumba, which is the oldest from Australia. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we have Adelsheim, which is really mm -hmm. one of the oldest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yep. we, we need to, yep, I think we, we might be onto on something but here. It could I'm be like the, the oldest, oldest, the oldest family owned wineries, wineries from, yeah. you know, yeah, from can, the respective we, areas, right? I mean, so. we can always hit, because they have lots of different wines, so we can always hit on something different. Uh, yeah, maybe that's something we do here in the future. Let us know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Uh, some of the oldest uh, family-owned wineries from around the world. That'd be yeah. kind of a cool little. Uh, and, and as and as we move on, and speaking of comments, guys, let us know what you guys are drinking. We'd yeah. love to know. I know we just did the, the Power Hour show, which was yes. great. I mean, yes. you guys uh, bought up that last show. I think uh, Santa Claus Ooh. was good to a few of you on the gift cards, maybe redeeming yes. some of the loaded great gift cards, or. Some of you are just trying to build up points for the jackets. Because, yeah, I, I know. Mean, that's after last week, you got some people on, people on, have some on, the, road, on the road to people the jackets. People have some <laughs> points uh, after last week. So, yeah, they'll be getting some zip-up hoodies uh, or even nice. winter hats soon. All right. Well, let's let's keep the show rolling. We're going to go uh, uh, kind of um, uh, in a uh, – uh, We're, we're going to stay in Chile. Stay, stay in Chile. We're finish so, in Argentina. Uh, I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to get your – the next one up. Now, this is a grape that I absolutely love. I don't think it gets enough respect. Um, <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield, right? No respect around here. I think it gets forgotten. Um, and and I and people go, what Carmenere? Carmenere? Like they don't know. They don't know what to what it is. And and so, but it is a a beautiful, rich, deep purple wine um i know this is probably one that everybody goes oh that kind of stains my teeth uh because because of how how purple it is i'm going to show you on camera here yeah, should we uh yeah we'll do a little pour, up camera, pour, yeah, camera, pour. camera pour yeah look i mean just look at how deep and purple that so is pretty. uh so 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 pretty uh, like <laughs> Like, I don't know. It makes me feel mm. like I'm like a vampire drinking. <laughs> you know, like, it's like it's like a big book. You're like, I've read that, right? You know, you're <laughs> now, like, now we've we've had this Casa Silva Carmenere before in the shop and it didn't taste But this is I'll, I'll do I'll do the uh, I'll oh, do yeah. your I'll oh, do yeah. it right there. Camera two. There camera we go. Camera two, yes, camera like two shot. Uh there you go. Wow. This wow. is Oh, yeah. yeah, the uh, Vanna cam. Oh, it's yes. supposed to be the Vanna cam, but she, she's oh, she's not wearing she makeup tonight, so we're not. Uh... She has. Oh, come, oh my goodness! Oh, oh, and we can put you well, on camera. She looks way better without makeup than I do without makeup. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll say that. So, so this is their single vineyard. Uh, backwards here. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's gonna be slightly backwards. Oh, just goodness, camera, but, no, yeah. This is like chili heaven. Like it's like peppery. Well, it's, it's like you walked in the savory spice company, yes. right? It's like you literally, oh, you're like, you're like, I've walked into like the Turkey Grand Bazaar. Or I walked into like you're know, like you're, I took a vacation to Morocco or something this like that. It has all these like kind of far east spices, you know. Yeah. That's what I love about this. But what well, was Danny was was mentioning, 
uh, Carmen Yer, uh, I mean, you were saying you just you just found a, a love for it, right? I mean, all of a sudden, yeah, it seemed like you, uh, you know, wine when, from Chile, you just loved immediately, right? Yeah, we as soon as Rep started bringing stuff in, and, and especially Carmen Yer's, I was like, mm, this is I when I first when we first on the shop was not something that I was I was aware of or even knew existed, and uh, as folks brought it in, I was like, this is yes, this is yummy. Now, I what I'll say about it uh, is it's a little bit tougher of a hand sell because uh, if someone's like, I've never heard of that grape, it's sometimes tough to get people to do that in the shop. But uh, we're going to we're gonna do a great explanation of it uh, tonight so that you know why you should probably be picking a, a bottle of this into your cart. Uh, we're going to go back. Uh, we're staying in that uh, Santiago, Chile area. Uh, and uh, TC, I'm going to let you take over. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, 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 I mean, why – First of all, it's good. I mean, let's just go ahead and say that. Oh, it's start. Let's, go ahead and start. let's go ahead and book this conversation by saying this is a damn good wine. I think yeah. all of you should uh, behoove you to put put in your cart if you if you can. Uh, so this this is a wine as we mentioned from from Casa Silva, fifth generation, and and what they do or have done, uh, they have three different vineyards that that run the breadth of the Cachagua Valley, which, as Danny said, is it's very close mm -hmm. to south of Santiago. Um, they have uh, the uh, Angostura, which is in the middle. They actually have the lowly uh, vineyards, which are close to the Pacific, which actually grow some uh, Syrah and some Viognier. They actually do call it, some wineries call it Shiraz now uh, in there, <coughs> South America. Excuse me. And then this is the Los Lingas, uh, which is a single vineyard uh, on the, um, I guess I would say the easternmost part, right on the foothills in the Andes. So this is almost 1,200 feet in elevation. As I mentioned earlier, most wines and wineries are between three to 600 feet. So to have something higher up in elevation, as we've said at nauseum on the show, higher elevated wines, mm -hmm. low yielding, we extract more flavor. But as what Danny was alluding to earlier, if you've never heard of Carmenere, there's a reason. Because outside of about 20 years ago, it was thought that, well, well I mean, 20, God, 20 years ago was 2000. Uh, so let's just go ahead and say that in uh, 1970s and 80s, I mean, yeah, damn, 50 20, years ago. God, 50 years ago. I know. It looks like you're talking to Karate Kid stuff. I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I think that stuff was like 20, 20, 25 years ago. And you're like, well, that's, that's 45. Years. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so, a little, it's a little longer than that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. God. Yeah, 19, anyway. 1980. God, so 40 uh, years ago. Uh, so. Satellite and you hear a song, you're like, gosh, that was great. It was like three years ago, and it was like 20 years ago. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was like, it was like 12, 12 presidential elections yeah. ago, and you're like, what, what in the hell is going on here? Anyway, I digress. So, so this was a grape that was thought to be extinct, and as I mentioned at the, at the onset of the show, Chile is this very unique wine region that really, first of all, all of you should be drinking more Chilean wines. Number one, <clears throat> number two is when I say old world, uh, I don't really refer as much as the old world in terms of of the styles of wine. Uh, I really mean uh, the varietal. So Carmenere was a grape that is native to Bordeaux, much like Sauvignon uh, Gris is, and was planted uh, by the by the Silvas in the late 1800s because what they wanted were some of the top of the line varietals from Europe, i.e. France, i.e. Bordeaux, because at that time, the late 1800s, if you want the best of the best, it was, you know, the Chateau Moutons and the Chateau Lafitte's, and, and to some degree, some would argue, you know, and again, the price reflects that, that those are some of the top flight wines out there as, as well. So anyway, uh, after Phylloxera, which really wiped out most of the vines in, in North America, uh, some in South America, and in Europe, this was a varietal when they replanted, they basically thought that it was just essentially extinct. Uh, and uh, there were wine writers all throughout the 40s and 50s and 60s that had talked about Carmenere that, you know, it was a grape that, hey, you know, this was a grape that, you know, back in the day, this is what it looked like. Well, because of, 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 of sort of geeked out enologists and wine writers and people like that that had talked about it, uh, you know, a young student at UC Davis, which is like our Sorbonne uh, for winemaking, uh, was doing a study down in Chile, and they were doing a study of Merlot vineyards. And he said, and they were like, oh, this is our Merlot. And he goes, well, wait a minute. The, the foliage, which is the leaf, uh, the, well, the leaf, and basically how you can tell a tree was yep. from a tree or anything yep, else. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> he goes, wait a minute. That looks like that foliage looks way different than the Merlot back home. I mean, Merlot is obviously different, but it, you know, it's, it, you know, the most of the foliage should be, should be the same. So anyway, after, after several years of genetic testing, they figured out that the Merlot, a.k.a. Chilean Merlot was in fact Carmenere, was this yeah. extinct uh, Bordeaux varietal. And so uh, there was this massive uh, undertaking to not only uh, rename uh, and to identify these uh, varietals that no one else in the world has. So Chile makes international varietals, Pinot Noir, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon. As a matter of fact, these guys make 
Cabernet Sauvignon and some Petit Verdot, one of your favorite from this yes. particular vineyard. That yes, is I, I saw that. I saw that today. Yeah, the was... Petit Verdot and, and the Cabernet yeah. Sauvignon from this uh, small. We and we don't even get as a supplier. We don't uh, get uh, like any of these wines because actually this is another wine that's less than two thousand cases uh, imported. But the Los Lingas vineyards uh, really personifies Carmenere because it, it like Merlot. You get medium tannin, you know, so I would say in that four, four and a half plus to like six and a half plus range on the tannin scale. But instead of Merlot, which has this nice cherry flavor, uh, Carmenier has this spicy note, this kind of wild, rugged, kind of like, as, as we mentioned from, uh, you know, just when we poured this wine, this smells like you walked into Savory yes, Spice Company. It really does. And you're like, you're like, I can't remember what spices they were, but I, I went in the shop and just went crazy. And yeah. or like the olive, on the, the olive oil. Like olive oil companies, when you go yeah. in there and taste a bunch of olive oil, you come home, you're like, I don't know what the hell I picked, but they tasted great in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I don't know what its name is, but yeah, no, I, what I'll say about Carmier is it's very approachable. Um, it, 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 it does, uh, I even kind of get yeah. a little little cocoa yeah i was gonna say mocha uh, i was mocha, literally about to say mocha, mocha on that as well yeah. Yeah. um which uh, which i really really enjoy yeah. uh and i i really really think uh you know, uh, as we need to start introducing this to more people because well, I think I, they would really, really enjoy it. And, and let's be honest, just like Malbec, there, there's some there's some quick buck artists out there. And, and in Chile, I, you know, I will say, I mean, that there are, you know, I would say the dogs are smaller and fewer and fewer and far between than, say, in Argentina. But certainly there's some dog carmineers out there. I mean, there's some carmineers yeah. out that are out there that are almost bell peppery. They're just kind of green. Mm -hmm. They're almost, you know, kind of pinotage. I mean, there's definitely some good at pinotage out there, but some pinotage gets the knock of that's why the band 80 you know yeah yeah, yeah. uh and so that's why i think some cheaper carmineers do this is a carmineer guys uh i mean again you talk about some of the oldest uh genetic clones of carmineer from the entire country brought over from bordeaux uh coming from this particular vineyard only import in like 2,000 cases. Uh, you know, we were able to get a get a. We we have a, we have access to a little bit more, but we just don't keep a lot of this one. As we talked about the car, the entry level Carmenere, which they blend all throughout the three vineyards, we get a little bit more. It's a little bit cheaper, but when I say a little bit cheaper, it's not like to say this is reserved tier pricing. This is yeah. still at a very very reasonable price. Yeah, very, what, what, what do you think yeah, about this wine, Vanna? This one, this one has all. It's all my boxes. The smell, yeah. the taste, just the color, all of the things. Yeah, I know. Mm. This is. I can see Van is going to be drinking a little bit of this tonight. <laughs> uh, and, and great, yeah. great price. Got a, got a couple extra bucks off on this one. Uh, twenty five down to twenty two. Mm. You can go over the load of grape now and, and and put that in your cart. Remember to use your discount code, coupon code, uh, for your club level, um, so you don't miss out on that and uh, that extra additional discount. If you're not in the wine club, please come into the shop. We'll get you signed up uh, and we'll tell you all about uh, the perks of, of being in the wine club. Uh, and uh, we're actually trying to talk about something to do for wine club members who help us sign wine club members, uh, new wine club members up. So we're working on something for that as well a so little little referral programs we're trying to figure that out now but um Man, that so stay tuned for this yeah this is so 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 good um but we'll we'll, we'll keep this in the glass as we start maybe uh, moving into the next one don't don't dump uh, it no, yet. I can't, I can't don't do it. don't dump it yet don't dump it yet but we got to keep the show rolling uh because we're doing a great we've got a great pace we had six wines so i just want to keep everything moving along uh and so with that being said let me get over here to uh actually i want to Point out one thing. Uh, before oh yeah, we the, the slide. Oh yeah, so, so the so the horses. So the horses. The yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got to talk about those. Yeah. So no, no, no. I want I wanted to at least get us to talk no, about no, the horses. You said I, the horses. I, can, I was going to do that. And we when we we like, we, do like, we do what we do. We go we, off. We go off tangents. <laughs> TC, I'm going to give you one minute to talk about the horses. <laughs> then we're moving on to the next one. One minute. Talk so, about the horses. So, so yeah. So so Casa Silva. Uh, in addition to making this fantastic wine, um, these guys personify um, just nature, and they love horses there. So they actually have. Beautiful stables there. They have uh, polo grounds. They actually have this, I was told, a bullfighting ring. However, they don't kill the bulls there. They actually just, I guess they just rough them up a little bit, I suppose. Or they're, but they don't like to like, well, I guess so. They, 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 don't, they don't kill them. I guess they, you know, they get to live. Right? Uh, but, but anyway, Casa Silva, uh, what's great about these guys right here is um, – with the, with the grounds, it's it basically like a living, breathing ecosphere. It's not just a vineyard. It's not just a winery. It's like this kind of a state. Uh, and so when you go there, uh, you don't have to just be a wine drinker. I mean, wine is just kind of the cherry on the top, right? Uh, but what I love about this uh, particular uh, winery, and again, I'm salivating because I've had some uh, 
folks uh, from Tryon get to go uh, talk about just how beautiful that is. And we have some equestrian minded folks that went and were able to ride some of these horses that were there. I don't know wow. if I, I'd be raving up, but I'm, I'm sure the horses are tamed. I'm sure the tourists are tamed. Yeah, they're not. They're that. they're not running off with you, TC. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I would definitely uh, definitely be hopping on one of those horses if I was down there. Uh, I love I love riding horses. So uh, all right, well. Just wanted to at least talk about that. And that's actually that's actually the winery right there too um, in the picture um, uh, you're looking at. Now it's time to move on to one of uh, my my other faves uh, in in this uh, part of the world, uh, and that's to call. Uh, we've we've done a lot of stuff um, there there uh, from from their the Luca stuff, the Luca and, stuff and um, the the Petora the Petora, the Petora, yeah, the Petora yeah, yeah. Um, is another one of theirs. Um, and uh, this this little natural Malbec Syrah blend, I know, is a favorite for a bunch of people uh, in the shop. Um, it just drinks so, so nice. Um, I, I like that the Malbec brings the fruit and that Syrah brings the spice. And um, it's biodynamic, uh, all natural, so you're, you're not uh, getting any added stuff in there. Yeah, go ahead and pour that. Uh, and this will going to get us right into what you're going to be thinking of when you think of Argentina, and that is that is Malbec. Um, and but we just thought we'd do this little blend here yeah, first, besides well, doing yeah, showcasing I mean, several hey, Malbecs. Red blends are, I mean, red blends are hot, right? I mean, if you want red blends, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, do, I'll bring you over, oh, yeah, bring you over here. I'll give you the oh, yep. perfect. Oops, oh. sorry. Excuse me. There you go. Look at that label. Really cool. There we um, go. All right. So yeah, to call guys, this is. Uh, this is their natural, uh, you, know, you know, all their wines are certified organic, but this is from their newly certified biodynamic uh, vineyards. Um, uh, and, uh, and what's beautiful about this one, uh, particular one, is from the Uca Valley, really high up in the Andes, as I, I mentioned, you know, Salta, 6,000 feet, you know, these vineyards are at, you know, average about 3,500 feet. Uh, this was uh, established by Ernesto Catina, which is a fourth generation uh, Italian uh, Argentine winemaker, and uh, he actually was a student uh, of the Renaissance humanism. And, and the kind of, you know, the funny thing to, to, to see and talk to this guy, you know, they, 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 they look at the wine as, well, let's try this, let's try that, you know. So there's a lot of experimentation, and there's a lot of this, we're not afraid to mess up, because we feel like if we mess up, we learn something, right? And so I think that's what's interesting about this wine, this winery. Again, another uh, a trip that we've had, I've had some colleagues go on, and they say it's one of the best lunches. That, I mean, they said it's like ours. I mean, it's like one of those lunches where they just go, oh, yeah, have you had this? Let's break out a six liter of that. I was like, I'm like, that's a great lunch right there. I mean, of course, there was a table full of people, but hey, it's wine reps. So, I mean, the six liter goes down pretty quick, right? So, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but but this is a uh, this is a wine crafted by Ernesto and Laura Catena. And uh, and again, as you know, they, they had to do some Malbec, but Syrah, as Danny said, just adds this extra component and layer to it. And I think Syrah... Uh, is one of these international varietals that's finding a home now in Mendoza. Um, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> you know, Mendoza, huge wine industry domestically. So, uh, you know, they drink a lot of wine there and they drink a lot more wine than we do here in the States. And again, as I said, all these wine dinners we've done, we need to bump. God, man, I mean, USA, we got to be number one, man. I mean, we got to bump, bump it up. We got to bump it up. Three gallons do. versus like, I think these guys are like nine, ten gallons. Yeah, and of course, the Italians and the French are way beyond like, that. So like 20 we, we, gallons. Need to, we need to bump our numbers. Those are rookie numbers. We need to bump our numbers. Yeah, we just, we're, we're getting there, though. I, I feel, I feel well, like everyone uh, watching the show, we're like, who are these people? You know who those people are. We, we, need, to, we need to permeate, you know, tell mm -hmm. a few friends because, again, guys, these are all wines. Uh, just like virtual vines, you know, we try to find price point uh, uh, wines, but wines that everyone also also will like. But yep. anyway, this is a beautiful, beautiful little red blend uh, uh, from Tikal. Uh, as Danny said, the Patriota, which uh, we've done in the shop, uh, and uh, the Luca, which I know y'all have done for the wine club uh, at one point uh, many, many moons yep. ago. Uh, but this is a fun wine. So, yeah, this I love this map because this shows the Uca Valley here in the purple. Yep. And then uh, a little bit later, actually, very next wine, we're actually going to go a little bit further up. I have a, clo uh, I have a closer up. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. I, love, well, yeah. I love how you uh, – yeah. uh, And so I was going to show everybody kind of like where to call is, which is uh, kind of like nah, – it's going to be tough for me to draw this because it's so small. But uh, you're right You're right in here. Uh, let Right, and it's actually number nine, which is that first oh, one. Perfect. That first one. So let me do this again. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can get it in there. It's that third one, all the way on the left. That one right there. 
that's yeah. the call. Yeah, uh, that's where the, that's where the vineyards are. Uh, so yeah, and not too far away from Tupangato, kind of the base of, of right there, uh, a little mountain range, and um, uh, and so yeah. Well, and what's great about Tikal is I think that they just really mesh, and they this when you go to their websites when you talk to people that you know are, are ambassadors for call you know the wine they certainly talk about but they talk more about you know the, the you know nature and the vineyard and you know argentina as a whole i mean they're very holistic you know when they talk about the wines and that's what i love about to call is uh you know not only are they fantastic fleshy drinkable uh uh wines you know, i have a little picture of a couple little vineyards there yep yeah, it's a couple uh, of the vineyards that they pull from but here's here's kind of your view yeah, see, see, <laughs> so, so, look, so that's probably a lunch they had right yeah. there at the very bottom there guys yeah it's actually the winemaker down in the yeah. right hand uh, yeah. corner yeah so so th this is uh so this is well, yeah, as, as danny showed a little picture of the vineyard right here at the base of the at the andes and uh if you were ever there uh and you know i think san rafael's the main town you basically fly right over uh, the Andes, which is like 10,000 feet. So uh, the, the flight is not that long, although you go basically straight up in the air and straight down. <laughs> well, that, I can, I'm can. sorry now. Can you imagine just just sitting there right now having a glass of this wine and just staring at the Andes? Wow, I just, I, so that's good. so pretty. I mm. mean, it's kind of like when you're, when you're in Denver, right? And you, and you see the Rockies and you're like, oh yeah, it looks pretty close. And you're like, that's nowhere yeah, near. Yeah, yeah. It's not anywhere near so you. The first part of the state uh, it's like Nebraska. <laughs> the second part is like Utah, basically. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Uh, see, those mountains just look so beautiful. Okay, but uh, see, I'm ready oh, you're ready for that. We're one. gonna have a little bit of it, but this me. is uh, really nice. And again, that's the the winemaker, and I kind of grabbed a cool little uh, shot of them inside the winery. Well, some food. this this is this is the wine for literally everyone at the table, everyone for yeah. a gift. I mean, guys, this is uh you know all of these quite frankly are the pit pounders but this this yeah. is the uh, i mean i'll say the, the, the carmenere has the has the spicy note to be the spice pit pounder mm -hmm. this is just you drink the bottle and you're like do you have two more bottles yeah. in the house because yeah, this is, it's this, going to go down way we way probably did it we actually probably did it in the wrong order a little bit because i think this has a little bit more fruit yeah a little more fruit to it uh, than, than the carmenere yeah uh, okay. even though uh just just yeah. tasting them back to back so okay. which we didn't taste back to back Prior, I can say, yeah. hey, wait. but no, it just because that spice of that sure. carbon yeah, yeah. air is a little bit more than on here. With yeah, the yeah, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of so it's just a scene stealer. <laughs> it is. Yeah, this is just. It's always uh, again. It's sold sold well in the shop. Uh, ever since we we did a tasting a while back, and it's been in the shop, and you know, uh, and there's there's several people who really really enjoy it, and they're gonna be happy to see it back on the shelf this week, um, and then possibly I'll make sure I reach out to them and remind, let them know that it's on discount, so that can take a little well, extra and, money. Well, and I think the, one of the reasons we, uh, you know, wanted to do this tonight, I think we, like I said, we've done the Lucas stuff, we've done the Patriota, we haven't done uh, this one. I think this is one I, no. I don't think we've done. I mean, if we've done a tasting, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is a beautiful mm -hmm. wine. Yeah, nice lush fruit on the front. Um, kind of um, dark, dark fruit, uh, mm -hmm. and and just just very supple tannin mm -hmm. on the back. Uh, very easy, and and it, just to sit back and just enjoy this wine. It doesn't does not take much. So. Very smooth. I mean, you know, so well, well integrated. I mean, oak very, is very minimal, uh, minimal used with this one. So yeah. it's very integrated. I mean, you know, it's not really present. I mean, again, the tannins are very very smooth i mean this is something that you know as danny said we could transition right from the pinot noir right to this wine right here i mean this is yeah, a yeah, you know, beautiful transition between perfect. those two perfect man what do you think uh i love this one <laughs> yeah. i mean it's not of course the carmineer to me but it's like it's it's a close close second there you go. yeah well, I think the theme, guys, tonight, I mean, you know, not only with the price points, but, you know, the flavor, you know, and, and the quality. I mean, yeah. I think certainly you have the bigger, bulkier wineries, I mean, and, and, and sort of the, oh, we need a Malbec from Argentina to fit a price point. But we have, you know, fifth generation here, fourth generation there. Uh, we're about to talk about the oldest from Men Mendoza with Luigi Bosca uh, next. But, I mean, these are all wines that we're finding for reasonable prices 
30 bucks and under 20 bucks under 15 bucks under in some cases yeah. uh that tons you know of tons of flavor guys i mean yeah. that like, you know that like, pedigree with a capital p guys i mean this mm -hmm. is something that you know again this is you know oftentimes when you think about under 20 under 15 bucks sometimes it gets pegged as as hey this is the bottle with a cute black labrador yeah. on it and you say oh i know peggy has a black lab let's just get that for her. <laughs> yeah and then peggy goes well just pours the wine out and wants to keep the bottle these are ones that peggy's going to be say where the hell did you get it give me yeah. another bottle i want six more bottles i want a case and frankly with danny's prices these prices won't last guys so make yeah. sure you yeah, yeah, let them know these are these are really really good and we we kind of saved uh i, I would say the star uh for for last i want to say best for last but we're definitely going to be the star of the show um we are going to go up a little bit in price point on this one but not not break the budgie uh expensive um uh though i i do want to throw up this comment right here because we did ask what everybody was drinking and uh michelle is having that 18 uh 99 Pinot Noir from uh, Elahi, um, Elahi, Elahi. Um, Michelle, you're breaking the budget tonight because that is not a cheap Pinot Noir. So, um, so I'm glad you're I'm glad you're enjoying it. It is it is a very very nice uh, nice Pinot Noir, but that's not everybody's Monday oh, okay. <laughs> Pinot Noir. You go to your house. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So so congratulations on on cracking that opening and enjoying it. It is it is a, a nice Pinot Noir, but uh, uh, we do have some more of that in the shop, folks, and uh, it. it it is Every really good. It is. Every day should be <laughs> celebrated. Every day, hey, yeah. It is. It is. So, uh, but that that's a fun one. So I'm glad you're I'm glad you're enjoying that. Mm -hmm. and, good, and feel free, folks, to comment on anything else that you guys are enjoying, or if you have any questions about any of the things we've gone over. Because uh, now it's time to talk about you know uh, you know we the the wine speculator uh, we were gonna <laughs> you know uh, wine spectator tends to tends to put out their top 100 list. Uh, in December, and, and sometimes you can get wines on it, and sometimes you can't. Uh, and this this is one that we can get our hands on. So we said, hey, let's uh, let's talk about it tonight. Um, and folks, I'm gonna go that bring that over here, and you might go, man, that Luigi Bosca name sounds familiar. That's because if you're in the wine club, you did taste their Cabernet Sauvignon in December. It was in our December club. We just still have some of that in the shop. But this is their single vineyard DOC Malbec. Uh, and this is stellar. This is not the first time I've had it. I think I had the 2016. I think I've had the 2017. And now I think this is now the, this is the 2018. Uh, and uh, folks, I mean, it, it is drinking uh, like solid, intense, like solid. Intense, like this wafts mm. of cherry and violet mm. in there, lush plum. I mean, this is a beautiful wine, guys. Oldest family owned winery from Mendoza. Uh, this kind of, what's great about this particular winery, and I can go on at nauseum about this particular one, but what I will say, and I, what I want, I, I, I don't want to forget to mention, is that in the uh, late 80s, I think 1989, uh, the family, uh, because again, Luigi Bosca being the oldest there, really wanted to make Argentina wines showcase internationally. I mean, we got to think, guys, in 1995, you couldn't casually walk into the loaded grape. You know, while Oasis Wonderwall was playing all in the background, uh, and by you know, right? Uh, and but by, that'd be more. That'd be more ninety-five. Ninety-five. Well, I said ninety-five. Well, I said eighty-five. No, no, that, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 95. ninety-five. Yeah, 95. I mean that's okay. what I'm saying. So even ninety-five, right? Which again is Van and I kind of cry to say that was almost thirty years ago. But um, but in, in ninety-five, you couldn't go in and buy wine from Chile and Argentina, right? Yeah. No. And unfortunately, some of the first ones on the international market, like a lot of wines are are the bigger, bulkier producers, which again, are, are made to fit a profile, but they make inroads for these smaller, boutiquier wineries to, to kind of shine through. And Luigi Bosca has been doing their thing since the late 1800s, but now are finally getting their comeuppance because as Danny said, they're getting all this accolation, all this adoration. But Luigi Bosca in the late 80s were the first to basically self-regulate and petition the Argentine government and to do the very first DOC, much like they do in Europe, you know, the AOCs and DOCs and DOCGs or the American AVA, as we have here, mm -hmm. uh, to do a self-regulating uh, uh, body to say we have a need to define an area. And as a matter of fact, it is the only DOC to date in all of Argentina, uh, Luan de Cayo. Uh, which you can see right there, yeah, that little yep. northern, yeah, uh, uh, northern part there. It's actually the DOC is actually highlighted. Uh, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah there so, you go. So, that and is so what, and what's great about that area right there? Yeah, and so, yeah, and so, and there, yeah, there you go. Perfect. And so, what's great about uh, these guys is 
in addition to being from a specific area, which which makes sense, it has to be from vines that are at least 50 years or older. Uh, it has to produce a very, well, I won't say small amount, but there's regulations on how much fruit the vines can yield. There's also regulations on how many uh, or how many how much spacing the vines are. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also regulations on the aging. I think it's 12 months at the winery. There's also, and if that wasn't enough, regulations <laughs> to show. Yeah, there you go. They actually have to number each bottle. So to be a DOC wine from this specific area, it has to go through all those uh, things. Now, Luigi Bosca, who's the ones that basically founded the Appalachian, are the ones to, to start the whole process. Uh, this one go averages about 70 to 80 year old vines, uh, spends about 14 to 16 months uh, in barrel. Mm. And guys, I would blind test other wines from other regions throughout the world. This isn't just a great Malbec. This is just a damn good wine yeah, that really just is. that is it's a world-class wine i mean this is a top flight wine whenever you drink it you just know you're in a different league you know and uh and guys whenever uh and, and i know we've talked about spain but south america also offers it you know as danny said this isn't this isn't sub 20 guys but for 25 dollars, this is going to taste every bit like a 60 dollar bottle yeah. of wine I mean, yeah, this, what do you guys think? Yeah, I this is definitely – it drinks above the price point. Way above the price. Uh, yeah. I would – having, you know, with all the stuff – 25 you know, bucks. That's a great price. I'm sorry. I just want to yeah, say yeah, just, 25 yeah, bucks is a fantastic you, price. You know, that's that's a that's a value – Oh, my that's God. That's a value Cabernet out of California. I right? know. Or the triple V. I mean, yeah. I know we're going to add the fourth V to that right there. It's yeah. like value virtual vines. Yeah, you know, it is. Virtual this, virtual I, this is – for those of you that like Malbec, mm. for those of you who like want to have something that's really, really nice Malbec, this is the bottle um, to, to buy tonight. Um, the the other stuff is great. Uh, I definitely say throw the Torontes in because it's if for that price, drink one of those. You're going to enjoy. Actually, drink, throw two in because you're going to drink the first one so fast. The the Sauvignon Gris, it's just we'll so have four different. Cases, guys. It's, first it's, of all, I want to say it's going to be gone. I know it's going to be gone. Pick up yeah. a few for the shot, but yeah. it's gonna we don't have gone. a lot of this wine. They only import 300 cases. Yeah, importing 300 cases, and, and we'll, we blow through it. Uh, and there's a lot of folks that once they find out that they can get it, uh, they're going to be all over it um you know the 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 malbec syrah blend just drinks so easy and it's a great price the the carmen is really i need to get more people drinking carmen and it's just so good uh and even the pinot noir as different as it is uh is different in a good way um and so and so enjoyable but this is the bottle um it, it doesn't need to have accolades in the sense that once you drink it, it you're going to go, yeah. wow. The but, tannins are there, but, very firm tannins. But you're going to know why it gets the scores yeah. and why it's on Wine Spectator's Top 100 this year uh, as soon as you crack open a bottle. Um, now, what I'll say with that is because this is the vintage that's in Wine Spectator's Top 100, um, the the likelihood of me being able to get more of this or a lot of, so to order heavy tonight because it won't be long before TC goes yeah we're out, we're out of that we're out of that everybody else uh, scapped it up so hop on it get on it now um, it is <laughs> drinking like I I, I I would I would imagine this being a sixty to eighty dollar bottle the no. way it drinks um, and, and with the oh, and the accolades as well it you're is. talking you know and the regulations that go into yeah it. I mean so a winery started in 1901 guys this is a family that moved over uh, to Argentina for greener pastures uh, in the I think 1901 as I mentioned from the Basque region of Spain and uh, and again at that time you know the the best vines. Uh, you know, weren't uh, were thought of not to be from Spain or in Italy, were thought to be from France and specifically Bordeaux. So these guys brought over uh, Bordeaux varietals. As a matter of fact, they grow fantastic Cabernet. So for those of you that one picked up Cabernet last month, uh, bravo to you. For those of you that didn't or maybe maybe skipped it because there were some great options. Mm -hmm. I think yep. the, the Cristo stole the thunder, I think. Yeah, but Cristo. if you can circle back around, around, guys, it sounds like these guys have some great Cabernet. Uh, but they're Malbec. I mean, they make a fantastic, uh, I would say, entry-level Malbec. But this is the single vineyard uh, that, quite frankly, a lot of times when we do a reserved here, 
let's, let's face it, we're talking 30, 40, 50 dollars up in price. This is something comparatively speaking. Uh, I think the other one you probably sell for maybe just a few bucks cheaper than that, guys. So if yeah. you're 25 bucks, 70 year old vines, uh, for you know, you know, about a year and a half at the winery. Uh, oldest family owned winery from Mendoza. I mean, I don't know what else I can yeah, give you. It. Bottles it's that were actually numbered. I mean, <laughs> numbered, like, numbered bottles. You can trace the bottle back yeah. to one of those bottles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, it really is just an excellent, excellent wine. Uh, we'll do a quick little recap. I know people are throwing in their orders, uh, uh, to Tanya. If, if you want to, you know, pay in cash at the shop and pick up, you can do that as well. So just let Tanya know, and, uh, and Vanna Vines, and she'll write down your order. And, uh, and uh, I guess Michelle's uh, was celebrating her sister's birthday. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's happy awesome. Birthday. Happy birthday! So I'm glad you're uh, celebrating with such a nice bottle and and, and watching virtual vines. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's do a quick. Uh, I also want to show point out here. You know, this is kind of Malbec on the on the. Um, on the vine yeah. down there, which beautiful uh, winery too. Oh, there. look at those clusters! It's just mm -hmm. big clusters of grapes, and uh, oh, and then the, and the winery is there to the left. Um, so this very uh, Spanish style architecture, uh, thanks to the to, to the <laughs> the colonialism of, yeah. of of Spain in this area. Uh, and then there's the uh, actual vineyard as well um, for this uh, for the DOG. So. Mm -hmm. Or DOG, DOC, oh DOC. <laughs> sorry, yeah. So with the with the Snoop 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 Snoop, 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 Snoop got in there for me. So uh, I'm gonna take us off the screen so everybody can see this. But we started off uh, with that Sauvignon uh, with the Sauvignon so, Green. Yeah, I mean, let's go ahead and say 100 year old vines, 300 cases imported, under 20 dollars. If you're yeah. not putting your cart, guys, I yeah. mean, that's just that's yeah. something that almost everyone. Even if you don't drink white wine, let's go ahead and say it. Even if you don't even drink wine, you're loath to drink white wine. Put it in your cart, open it for someone, and be like, "Damn, mm -hmm. you know, Tommy, yeah. where did you get that?" Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's it's damn good at, at eighteen dollars oh plus your discount. Um, definitely, definitely yeah. consider that one if you have not tried it. You you need to try it because it is it drinks really, really, really well. Not a lot of it around, so yeah. you get it while it lasts. Uh, then the the Tarantes uh, from from Kuma it. Another Super one floral. I mean, wasn't that wine? Well, yeah. Beautiful? Oh, it's perfumey on the nose mm -hmm. and uh, just well, beautiful. That kind of jasmine, orange, mm -hmm. yeah. orange pills, we said. But guys, that's a little what ceviche written all over it, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a yes, beautiful little, little so wine. so good. Uh, then we uh, mo started moving to the reds. We did that with the uh, Max Reserva Pinot Noir, uh, and for uh, sub. 20 and then you're looking at almost 15 with most of you guys discounts uh what an excellent excellent little different pinot noir well, if you're used both to the chilean wines had this pepper note these like yep. spicy notes right mm -hmm. i mean i think we'll both agree uh or all three agree we i mean i think that both the chilean wines just bring not only they're not they're not fruit forward i guess they mean, no. they have, they're not earth forward either but they have no. this kind of extra pepper spice components spice, that's yeah. just beautiful when you think about not only this time of year sitting by the fire so that pinot noir again beautiful in terms of tannins but as danny said i mean that's just so drinkable so drinkable uh and then we went to probably you know what we would think is probably one of the top of the night was the uh, casa silva uh los lingus uh carmenere uh that carmenere uh again I, I think more people need to drink carmenere and mm -hmm. it's so good uh normally 25 on the shelf got it down to 22 so you're gonna get a little extra discount tonight uh plus your plus your club discounts at your checkout uh, and then we slid up to the to call biodynamic Malbec Syrah, which wow, yeah, don't yeah. sleep on that, but definitely yeah. get two bottles like that is yeah. going to go down too fast. You red blend lovers, I mean, I know red blends a wide category, about as wide as Montana, right? But I know you probably are stocked full. Of maybe the you know the California red blends or whatever your favorite red blends, maybe from the Cote de Rome. But guys, this is a fantastic. A uh, little kind of Bordeaux meets Rhone Valley takes place now. You know, Thrilla in Manila, Thrilla in Mendoza. <laughs> yeah, a uh, little wine Oof. right there. Uh, that is a beautiful, luscious uh, little red blend right there. And then, and then again, we we we've just finished up talking about the, the Louis uh, Bosca, Luigi Bosca single vineyard DOC, DOC tongue twister, right? tongue twister. <laughs> uh, you, you know, the D O double G of of, of yeah, Malbecs. Yeah. Uh, please. Wine Spectator, top yeah. 100. Yeah, 93 to 95 points every single year. I mean, it just, you it just, gotta it just, grab yeah. a bottle of it because if not, you're going to be kicking yourself that you didn't get a bottle. Um, well, because, and, I, and actually, I, I was over the holidays, uh, I gave a bottle of this to a friend of mine 
uh, who drinks a lot of California stuff. That's the cheap California stuff. So, I mean, they like good stuff, but California mm-hmm. heavy. And they text me back and we're like, TC, oh my, oh my God, this wine is just fantastic. I mean, because they didn't think of Argentina. They don't drink Malbec. Uh, you know, they, they, they kind of, like a lot of people have their three or four or five brands they're comfortable with and they buy them. I know not all of you guys, I mean, you guys are experimental, but this is something, guys, you can definitely bring over uh, to friends or family that permeate the triad. And guess what? They're going to be calling uh you back mm-hmm. and saying where did you get it and you'll be calling danny up and say danny do you got any more of that and hopefully we do maybe we just don't we'll have see. a lot of it yeah. not a lot of it up and the last thing i want to bring back up again uh is our valentine's wine and beer dinner uh on february 10th it's up on the website you can now uh uh recap just to you know if you would like to do that uh 60 for non-members 55 for members everybody um, knows they sell out super it fast. sells out super fast so you guys are the first to know about it because tomorrow i'm going to send out an email about it so you get the first uh, crack at you, it you said so. 50 seats let's go ahead and say 30 plus are already sold yeah I mean, probably I mean, you guys yes. already have like, yeah, yeah that many people so yeah it's gonna it's, go uh, it's gonna go know, fast yeah um, yeah so, so so let these guys know i mean because we did about 60 in two nights last uh time go around yeah. so we're gonna Squeeze it in to 50 people, so you better better yeah. make sure you're there. So you some know, people so. who did the last dinner between one of the two nights, they're not going to be able to go to this one. We have, like, the runway thing, like a little runway thing, a hashtag dinner where people can, like, walk in and hashtag it. Oh. Since the poorhouse is closed. I yeah. mean, I know that's, you know, money, but maybe, like, I mean, it could be pay, paper, machine, you know, whatever. Really? Uh, we'll figure yeah, it out. I, I did. Throw it out there. I mean, yeah, they, yeah. You, know, you know, red carpet. As people come in, maybe they can, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, do a little hashtag. Uh, will the bar be open? I guess people yep, ask. Yep, yep, yep. So the bar will be open, guys. Yeah, so, still I, mean, have, I know for some of you that, yep. you know, start getting the twitches the minute you walk in, you get a Manhattan or, a, or gin and tonic when you come in. You know, hey. Yep, they'll have that open for you to get a, a quick a quick beverage, uh, but you don't need it because we're yeah, going to get you lots be- of stuff. Beer and wine paired with those small plates. So uh, again, that's going to be on uh, February tenth. Uh, so uh, yeah, to take you know consider that. Uh, then also want to remind everybody, you know, you can go to Little Grape right now and 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 uh, order any of these wines. Uh, we'll have them in uh, starting uh, on uh, Wednesday at four o'clock when we open. Uh, I'm trying to click that and it won't let me click it. Okay, there it is. Uh, uh, Warden's Order tonight will be available for pickup on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Uh, so feel free to to, to, to uh, come in and see us on Wednesday and, and, and pick up your wines. Uh, but you know, we're, we're working on next week's theme. I don't have it yet, but it'll go up tomorrow as well. Uh, so you can you know about that. We have uh, a couple of special tastings in the works as well. Just waiting for some people to solidify the, the date. Um and so we'll, we'll, as soon as we have that, we'll, we'll, we'll put it out there in this way. Uh, and those special tastings will be um, one where you get a, a tasting kit, uh, and you can taste along with us, and it will be through a, a Zoom call versus uh, a, a Facebook setting. So, Perfect. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Wow. Well, guys, I mean, hey, I think one thing we can say, I mean, about Argentina and Chile is that, you know, the we'd, val- all like right we'd all like to go there. We'd all like to go there. I mean, right you know, the, the value, uh, you know, per, I mean, first of all, you know, when you travel, it seems like anywhere, uh, especially even over to Europe. I mean, the, you know, the dollar is just not it gets it gets beaten up. Uh, I don't know what the conversion rate is now, but when you go to South America, you get some people that are super hospitable. Uh, I mean, that love wine, uh, sit by the tables, sit mm-hmm. by the table, sit by the campfire. And uh, we could do several more shows about uh, Chile and Argentina, but it's going to be hard to top uh, with, you know, Luigi Bosca, Casa Silva, Tikal um you know some of these wineries yeah, that uh, a razzari mm-hmm. from chile i mean these are these are really some of the the top flight wines. We did a nice think. tour of it for sure <laughs> yeah. it a nice tour great wines uh so thank you guys so much again for tuning in and supporting us uh celebrating our third year anniversary in the shop with us that was great uh, i hope you guys enjoyed that those wines as well uh so really there may really there may pre- not be cupcakes left over if you come by yeah. the shop tomorrow. tomorrow you might be able to get a cupcake uh, there might be a few left uh not many but there might be a few but But thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back next Monday, 7.30. So, TC, sign us off. Hey, for uh, Vanna, for uh, this guy right here, Mr. Danny, keep on tasting. (laughs) Cheers, guys. Cheers.